And I just remember going, I said, that dude, when he get on, and then, you know, he gets on, but then social media catches on. Yeah. And then it's, it's just hard. It's hard. It's, it's hard to live uh, when you're living, when you're social media. And I tell them all the time, you have to, social media sort of makes you color inside the lines. Yeah. Or try to. Or try to. Yeah. Or, or like this. It makes you tuck your artistry in sometimes. Does that, does that make sense? Tuck your crazy in. Tuck your crazy in. You tuck your artistry in. Like I didn't know what a meme was. You know, I'm. You know, I'm. You know, shit. I'm a fucking. I was just catching on the MySpace and shit. Shit shifted. <laughs> so my my daughter sends me a picture of Rihanna, right, going to the Met Ball. And by the time I got the picture, whatever happened, the picture was Rihanna. And, and in this yellow dress and I, I hit my daughter I said I love the dress it's amazing I don't understand the pizza that's in it but may, you know maybe that's uh, 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 you know she's giving a nod to Italy and where maybe she got the dress from and she's like no dad that's a meme I said what that's a meme I said what do you mean she said no there's actually not a pizza in the dress somebody crafted or fixed it the, there they made it look like it's pizza yeah. because it, oh, because it's trailing behind her. And so me, I'm thinking, well, what the fuck does it mean? It says, no, that, that's what they do. I said, so this girl worked her whole fucking night to get this dress to go to the Met Ball, which is you're supposed to be, you know, out the box, and somebody puts a pizza on it, and that's all you see is a pizza. I said, how do you compete with that? How how can you be Michael Jordan? And kids run up to you and say, you're the crybaby face. <laughs> <laughs> you cry man. They go to cry man. <laughs> well, that memes was a, are like the best thing on the internet. It's one of the best things about the internet. It's, the it's people be being able to make funny. It's the best thing, but watch this though. It, once it sticks, that's what I'm saying. Once right. it sticks, you're oh, like, once oh. it sticks, it yeah, sticks. Once it, I mean, Michael yeah. Jordan, to somebody under the age of 18, he the crybaby face yeah. man. <laughs> hey, man, they go to the crybaby face. Hey, man, and then you know how... Uh, uh, you know how fans do it. Hey man, cry right quick, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get you crying. Mama. It's so true. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's so it's, tough. Well, it's, we were talking about fun. John Jones yeah. and how John Jones is fighting this weekend. Yeah. About John Jones is a wild motherfucker. Yeah. And that's why he's the greatest light heavyweight of all time. Because that's, he's so, it's part of who he is. You have to have it. We were talking about go, go, being with Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, back in the day, you couldn't, that's why I, when people say like, why does Mike Tyson, first of all, he's a fighter. He's not a tennis player, but Mike was a wild boy. And to hang out with him, you could understand like he was the biggest person on the planet and he had the demons, you know what I'm saying? And, but he's fun too, because because you see him in a club and you see, you see some girls and you're like, hi, how are you doing? <laughs> you like BMWs? The girls be like, what? Do you like you like BMW? You like cars? You like BMWs? And crazy, he'd take the girls out and go get a BMW. I mean, he was that crazy. You know wow. what I'm saying? Just saying, come on, come on, let's look at the BMW. And we'd open up the BMW dealership. And, but he was wild. But I say, just like how we were saying off here, you can't have that type of talent in that area and not have... The, John, crazy. John, John Jones can't you, you, you can't You can't drink milk And, and almost kill somebody <laughs> You know what I'm saying You can't Yo let me get that homogenized I'm about to get No you can't Yeah there's yeah. gotta be Something about you That's out of control Impulsive yeah. Wild Dangerous And that's what makes him so great Everybody You even talk about Even look at the people on your wall You look at Hendrix You look at Elvis They have to have something Because that's God fucking with us Yeah God's gonna give you Something incredible but he's also going to give you something to anchor that. Because I believe, this is what I believe in. And you tell me if you believe this. I believe in the yin and the yang of everything. Meaning like when there's absolute light, there has to be absolute darkness to balance it out. And that's what everything that we do. It's sort of like we're not going to get away with anything. Like anything that happens to you in life, you have to pay for it. Like I, I, it's like the grocery store. Okay, I got the career. Boop, got to pay for that. Okay, I got the money. Boop. Okay, I gotta pay for that. Then here come the family. Boop. Yeah, I need that money. Boop. Yeah, you 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 fuck me. I'm going. I'm going. I'm I'm gonna release, release a story about you. So it's all of these different things that you gotta pay for, and that's why you see these guys like that. Cause you know, like I said, talking to Justin Bieber, you know, with everything I said, some of this shit is supposed to happen to you. It has to. You can't otherwise. The think of the success that, that kid's had at 20 years yeah. old. It's impossible. I was just reading some shit about him canceling his tour. Yeah. Cause he just said too much work. I mean, he's just going crazy, I guess. But 
He's made ninety three million dollars this year. Yeah, like Jesus Christ, he's <laughs> fucking twenty. And yeah, and for us, we like shit, because <laughs> you know I ain't twenty. I'm like motherfucker, I'm gonna take that ninety million. I'm gonna go do a million. But we can't be in his mind, and we can't see how it is. He grew up that way. He grew up that way. Never had a normal life, and you don't expect. Like I, I like I always tell kids who want to be in this business to please wait. Like even with my kids, so just wait. Wait till you like. Wait till you can understand. Like I was able to be grown and and have some grown shit happen to me, and just regular life shit happen. So that when this happened, I still have a point of reference to get back to. Because you know, like I know, you've interviewed everybody. This business affects you in such a way where you'll see one person one day. I won't say the comedian's name, but I remember a comedian back in the day did like half of an HBO whatever. And then the next week I saw him, he had 12 bodyguards. And they were pushing me back. I was like, what the <clears> fuck? <throat> man? Man, yo, man, yo. But not right now. It just man. got crazy. Got crazy. They and get so crazy. They get crazy because... <laughs> And I've seen, I remember, I'll, I won't say the names, but there's been a couple of guys. I never get this one dude hit. And I went up to try to say something to him. And, and for some reason, he had a white suit on. <laughs> we were in a club. I'm going, why the fuck does he have this white suit on and these big shades? And I went to talk to him. And he said, not right now, man. I'm rich. He said that. That's what he told me. In front of everybody. Not right now. They got rich. God damn. Just let me be rich and famous right now. I don't want to hear your pitch. Because I was going to pitch him something. I said, man, you think you could get away? And I was like, That's wow. hilarious. And as he said it, I had to sort of like, okay. I had to get up. But that's, you know, that's what happened. But you got to be careful. That tide goes in and it goes out. And people come up and they remember. They remember. And they remember and, when you fucked with them. And we've, see, and we've seen them. We've seen them, but but being a comedian, we get we get a chance to sit in a different seat because we sort of our our jobs are, are, are observation, it, it, you know. So we still all have our own demons, but it's it's just different. You also get it. humbled a lot as a comedian. Yeah, you got to get those jokes. You're performing in front of a live audience. Yeah. It's all live. Yeah. It's got to work, and it doesn't work. Shit, you got to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. And you got to assess. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actors don't get a lot of that. That's one of the reasons why they're kind of shaky. Yeah. More shaky. Yeah, right? They don't get a lot of like that testing it live in front of people, that humility that comes with that. You don't. And, 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 it's, and it's tough. I was talking to an actor, another actor. And it's tough because, see, I'm a comic who became an actor. So I'm cheating. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can go do this and I can go, I'm, I'm going to be in St. Louis tomorrow, you know, doing right. some jokes. So I can, you know, I got to, I can get my thing off. But just actors, it, it's tough. Well, it's, you figured out a way to balance three careers. You can sing too. I mean, you could do anything. Yeah, you're, but, you're a weird guy in that way. You got a lot of weird talent yourself. You know, you're talking about Justin Bieber and yeah. Chris Brown. You've got some yeah. weird ability to shift too. Like, <laughs> can you see that love is real? And the girl, back, oh, Jamie, stop! You're too funny in the face. <laughs> Your face is too funny. I see Wanda singing to me. You funny. That's cornball. Stop. So I was like, fuck. Maybe I'll never sing. You know. So I was doing. Of course, the stand-up, you know, doing the wine and shit. And then it wasn't until, literally, um, I was throwing these parties in my crib. And I would always throw parties for, like, musical guys, you know. So I threw a party for Puff. Puff comes and, and big party. It's like 2,000. Puff is there. And it's all about him. And I'll never get, he got mad at me a little bit because I would follow him. Playboy, I said, yeah, let me get that. Man, ain't nobody getting this. And, I, and it wasn't back in the day with the, you know, with the camera phone. I had the big fucking Canon that you put on your shoulder and the light and the shit. I said, let me change the battery. Let me get all this shit, right? So at one point I told him, we were actually in Philly and he was throwing a party. He said, yo, Playboy, this party's a million and a half dollars. I said, like, to, for what? I mean, what are, what are you saying? He said, it, it costs a million and a half dollars to throw this party. I said, fuck, oh my God, I love it. The party's amazing. Yes, the mayor is here and everything. I said, but that's too much money. I said, you come to my place in LA, I'll throw you a party for 400 bucks. <laughs> that will rival this party. And he got a little mad because, you know, he was like, yo, no, I'm known for this shit. Don't front. I said, no, I'm not, not. I respect you. I said, but LA, I just know how to get around. So he gets to LA and uh, he calls me early in the morning. Yo, Playboy, make that shit happen. It's a Saturday. I said, cool. I go in on my phones. And by 12 o'clock in my small house in Tarzana, and, and God bless my neighbors that live there, I'm, I'm no longer there. I know they wanted me to get out of there because I was too much. 
but the party's fever pitch and I invited the right people you know the right girls who were beautiful but not too tight not too you know just everything was great the guys weren't no haters there you know cause LA could, you know I mean fucking fucking yeah. cuz uh, no one of that it was the right guys and he shows up <clears throat> And when he shows up, he goes, that's the girl on that TV show. Oh, that's the girl in the movie. I said, yeah, you're a friend. He's like, we all hang out here. So it's like, you know, it's all good. Like, and that's the girl. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, but look at the party. I said, look over there on the table. I got Kentucky Fried Chicken, but I put it in a nice plate. <laughs> I got Coca-Cola, but it's just in a pitcher. I said, we're at 280 bucks right now and counting. I won't go over 400. And he had the most incredible time, right? But at that party was all musical people. And I, I did it for a reason. At that party, Missy Elliott, of course, she had her room. Everybody's going crazy with Missy Elliott. I'm going to my girl. Thank you so much. Your show of respect will do much to repairing relationships in this difficult time. You bring back water more food, sir. What? If you want to help us, go and take spears from crazy water molds. We need two handful spears for our warriors. Some more crap. You help us again, yes? If you help. <laughs> 